Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and I'm so excited today because we have a very, 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 very special guest today. This special guest is Ron Turber. He is a consultant, and he helps people improve their financial situation. He has um, really had a long, uh, productive life, and he's come a long way, and he wants to share how he get, went from one point of his life to the point he is now, and he has a lot to say, and it's really inspiring and very motivational. So I'm not going to say any more. I'm going to give it to him, but before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Happy Wellness Expo. They're going to be in Livingston, New Jersey, and they have over 100 exhibitors. There's going to be a lot of doctors, coaches, and people in the health field, and they're going to have all different types of natural products and technologies. So come and visit. All the information will be in the description box. And if you'd like to be an exhibitor, their phone number is there and you can give them a call. So Ron, I'm so excited to have you on the show. You know, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do, because it's it's just very inspiring to me. It is. So thank you, Stacey, for having me on. Very grateful to, to be here. So my name is, like like you said, Ron Turba. I'm uh, I live out in West Tennessee with my with my wife and four kids, and we're just very blessed to be out here. I I've spent an entire career in consulting, uh, in finance, and basically what what we do in our business ventures is being able to help people in their financial situation, whatever that may be. Again, there are a lot of people listening that are in very various certain situations. Some of you are doing well. Some of you are doing not so well, but either way, I, I, I again, from my business venture point of view is going able to help people wherever they're at. And then on top of that, one of the assignments that I have been given by the Lord is to be able to improve them financially with the word of God. And there's a lot of things in here that I, that I feel that is missing from the body. Uh, nothing, nothing against anybody that you, that you hear on Sundays or Wednesday nights or anything like that. But I have been, but I believe that based on what I have heard and where I believe people should be is a very stark contrast. And so that's what I have been tasked to help people be able to do with their lives. Now, when you began, you know, when did you really have this passion? Like, you know, was it something that you always wanted to do since you were younger? You know, did you always want to help people somehow, some way? Or was it as you got older and we endured more obstacles as we get older, as a young adult and older, that you, you know, you saw people suffering and you really wanted to make a difference in people's lives? Well, growing up, I wanted to be an astronaut. Mm. So that's a very stark contrast from where I am today. <laughs> so, so that I mean, again, I, I have been very, very blessed. Uh, one of the giftings that the Lord has blessed me with is a, a financial and analytical background. And anybody who's known me in any capacity whatsoever has has known that. And I, I've always tried to felt okay when I started off really getting into the to the private marketplace. I helped companies and, and uh, private individuals as well improve their financial situation. Again, a lot of companies uh, helping do their books, sort of those those lines. And so that's where I felt, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing uh, and all of that. But that really, it, it may help me. It may help the, the people themselves a little bit, but it really just, it felt like something was missing. And as I've gone through my road of life, I've developed a lot more compassion for people because a lot of folks, uh, if, if you are in a situation where you grew up and you were not poor or even low middle class, it's very difficult to have compassion for those people who are there. And I have seen just over my, over my road of life, seen a lot of people that I know have so much great giftings in themselves and just aren't being able to utilize them. And I know that's a lot of your audience as well. So that's what I really want to be able to help people with is to, to, to use the word and my, my own personal experiences to be able to help people improve wherever they are, wherever they are. And one of the things that I like to talk about a lot is being able to increase financially themselves, because most people, when they when they hear somebody, whether it's a minister or even a business leader, talk about the word, the word and finance, it really just boils down to really two things. And that's giving or stewardship. And again, very important topics. But as as I have been writing my series that's coming out shortly, that's maybe 15 to 20 percent that I have found of the word. And there's, and that's a lot missing that yeah. most people just don't know about. And that's really what I have been tasked to do is to be able to help encourage, motivate, and exhort people to say, hey, no, it does, I know where you are now, but look where you're going in the future. Right. Okay? So that's a very big difference in what I, what I feel that a lot of people are missing. And that's what I've been chosen to do. 
Now, a lot of people get stuck in the past and they can't move forward in life or they're fearful of change and mm -hmm. they just don't know how to move forward. Now, what are your suggestions? How do you get people to focus on the future and to focus on, you know, the, the, the word of God and to really be able to focus on succeeding and reaching their, their primary goals in life and feeling good about who they are as a person? Well, the first thing that I, that I need people to understand is that the Lord loves them and you can't go anywhere forward until you really understand that. Now, I know you may be thinking, well, it, again, I know we were just talking about this, that if the Lord really loves me, then why am I in this situation? Because if somebody really loves me, they would really help me out. And I, I again, I totally understand that. And I've been in, for most people looking and watching this. I've probably been in your shoes at some point in the future. But what I have found is that when you get in the word and you do what the Lord wants you to do, and there are keys to success in this book and you follow them and you know about them and you put them into your lives, there is guaranteed financial increase. Okay. And that's what you can understand and look towards is that every single person in this book who followed the Lord wholeheartedly in some way, shape or form ended up better financially. Now that doesn't mean that if your if your desire is to, is to, to live in the house that you have or the car that you have. Again, that's fine. But just understand that more, more finances in the kingdom and in believers is going to take a significant amount of power out of the kingdom of hell and darkness, for, for lack of a better word, and put it into the kingdom of heaven. Right. Okay. And so you may, th you may be thinking, I'm doing, I'm doing great financially. I'm happy where I'm at. I'm doing what I'm doing. And, you know, I really don't have any desire for more. Well, guess what? There's a lot of people out there who could be really assisted by you. You have good influence. And the reality is you can use that in a mighty, mighty way to be yes. able to, to help improve not just yourself, but your, the kingdom as well. Because, the, I mean, again, the, there are so many great things that you can do when you're being blessed financially beyond just yourself. Right. So that, that's a big part of being able to do that is focusing on others be, in addition to yourself. And when you get to that point th and you start doing that, there's a blessing that comes along with that. And it's not just financial, too. Right. It, it's, it's other. It's spiritual and emotional. And, you know, there's so many people that, you know, over the years, I've seen people walk away from, from God and they walked away from Christianity and they had given up on life because they got so depressed because they went through so many things in life and they just couldn't see the light on the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what do you have to say to those people? How do they get back on that road? How do they get the motivation to, to, to have that love for God and real, that strength to really move forward and really be able to realize that anything is possible possible with the love of Christ, with the mm. love of God, with hope, faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope, all those, those things wrapped up into one. How can they get back on track? Yeah. And, and that's the most important thing, because again, it comes back to if God loves me, why am I in this situation? And every single person who is in depression right now is looking backwards. And when I get on a broadcast or a podcast or any sort of platform, you're going to get at the end of what I'm saying, you're going to understand that you're going to start taking away from backwards and start going into forwards. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, the, the, the most important thing, from a, even from a spiritual or theological point of view, is the fact that the Jesus did not just die for your, for your sin and salvation. He didn't just die so you could go to heaven. He right. also died to eradicate your poverty as well, because poverty, again, not to get too biblical and doctrinal, but, bi but biblically speaking, poverty is part of the curse that Jesus died for. So he didn't just die for your sins. He died for your poverty as well. And you, when you get in, in the word and you understand that, hey, there are things I can do today that can change my life today. And wow, if I can see where that bright future is that the Lord wants for me, all I have to do is start getting and start focusing on him, loving him and doing what the Bible tells me to do to provoke his financial blessing over my life. And I see where that is. And I see where that's going. I mean, even just King David for himself was a shepherd boy at 16 or 17, a nobody, but through the, through the progress that he made in his life, and loving the Lord and doing what he asked you to do. Mm -hmm. He ended up with a $7 billion net worth at the end of his kingdom. Okay. And so I, again, I'm not promising a six or $7 billion 
net worth for you, but I am telling you that that is a future that is ahead for you, a guaranteed financial increase because every single one of those Old Testament uh, promises that you have skipped over are for you. When Deuteronomy 8 tells you that, that you have wealth coming to you and everything that you have is increased and the Lord gives you the power to create wealth, when you see and understand that, and you just say, wow, instead of focusing on this, this stupid boss who just laid me off, it's the, the stupid lawyer who tried to just sue everything that I've worked for, you right. focus on him and what he wants you to do and look at where you're headed every single time. It's guaranteed because his word does not return void. And right. that's where you're headed. OK, so if you're in that position right now. And you're thinking, wow, I am so depressed right now. I can't pay my bills. I can't do this, that, or the other. When you start understanding that the Lord wants you, he wants you to increase. He wants you to do that. Right. It's not just so you can live a holy life. He wants you to live a blessed life. And yeah. look at what's going to happen. Not only are you going to get out of your situation, but think about all the people that are in your situation right now which is so many more. When you go to the grocery store and you pass a hundred different people, I guarantee you at least half of them are buying those groceries on credit cards because they don't have the cash to pay for it. And right. when you get out of your situation and you are living a very blessed life that you don't even have to check your bank account anymore. You just write checks and you know the money's there. Yeah. Think about what that's going to do for the people around you. It's not just for you to live an abundant life. Right. That's, what, that's the biggest blessing that you get when you're working with the Lord is that not only are you living an abundant life, which is honoring and pleasing to, to God, right. but you're also doing that for other people as well. Right. Okay. And so that's the biggest thing that you're going to get and understand that, wow, if I can just look forward to the bright, bright future that God has for me, he didn't destine you for poverty. There is right. no one in the, there's nowhere in the Bible where God said, I want you broke. Right. Nowhere. He wants you blessed and he wants you to do that. And there are things that you have to do to provoke that financial blessing. But it starts with knowing what my future is if I follow him and do what he wants me to do. So when you when you talk and you, and you have all this great information, if someone says, OK, you know, they're feeling overwhelmed because, you know, you have a lot of great information that you just provided to them. Yeah. Step one, what should they do? Step the one is understand that you have to love the Lord your God with all your heart. And you have to. And you have to know that he loves you too. Okay. So that's the very first thing. And that starts in your spirit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't start in your mind. It doesn't start in your, in your heart, because listen, we can talk and, and watch motivational talks from here to kingdom come, and they will give you a jolt. They will give you a jolt. Okay. But eventually that fuel tank is going to run out when your spirit is moved and motivated and says, wow, I know where I'm going with the Lord. And when I follow him wholeheartedly, that's the first step. The second step is, is understanding and getting into the scriptures, which, which, is, which, is, which is something that I like to do because right. I've studied and, and looked at this wholeheartedly. And again, it's more than just studying. It's acting it out too in my right. own pers personal life because I can tell you this, and, th and this may be very difficult to believe, but the moment I start focusing on what the Lord wants me to do and understanding what that is and understanding the giftings that he has given me because he loves me that much. And I work those giftings in the manner in which I'm supposed to do it. Watch the financial blessings flow. I'm telling you, I, I, this just happened to me a week or two ago when I, yeah. again, I felt very stuck. I yeah. thought, what am I supposed to be doing? And then all of a sudden I said, okay, what am I supposed to be doing? I'm supposed to be working on this book series and progressing it forward, which I was not. Okay. Right. But the moment I started doing that and I, can, and I just felt so stuck. And I felt uh, this is just going to be where I am. I'm going to be in the same place 12 months from now. The right. moment I got off of that and I started focusing and doing that wholeheartedly, all of my other business ventures grew literally within 48 hours. I got new accounts. I got new clients. I got this. this, this to be honest with you, this is when exactly when you we reached out to each other. It yes. was during that period when, when, when I said, okay, this is the next step I have to take. And once I took it, once I took it, every single thing opened up. And, and let me tell you something. There is no better feeling than knowing when you've been blessed by God. Oh, yeah. And, and part of that blessing is financial. And that's what I want you to, people to focus on. And what I help people do uh, amongst my, my current business ventures that I have is I'm supposed to be helping people 
increase financially. It's it, again, it's more than just dude, stewarding what you have. It's more than partnering financially. Those are very important, but most people have never heard anyone talk about God and him wanting you to increase financially, not just be good with what you have, but get more. Right. I think what it wouldn't, one of the misconceptions is, is that when you, when you believe in the word of God, because Jesus, you know, he, he was not materialistic, you know, he just, he was, he was very pure. He was just, you know, he, he lived life and he was full of love and he, he gave himself to everyone. But, you know, people, so people look at that and they feel that, you know, you're not supposed to be materialistic. You shouldn't care about materialism. You shouldn't care about money, but it's not, you know, you, you don't, I think the difference is you don't make materialism your God. You, 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 you want a fulfilling life. And in, in this society, we need money to survive and there's nothing wrong following God's word, looking at the future and becoming successful and doing what God wants you to do. Like you speak and you share your word mm -hmm. with about the Lord and how you could be financial. And yeah. I share my voice and I talk about a lot of different things about self-improvement to help people from all different ends of the earth. And, you know, that's something that God wants us to do mm -hmm. and whether, you know, and, but there's nowhere in the Bible that says that you can't be financially successful. And it's, it is nowhere saying that you have to be, you know, that you can't have materialistic things or you can't be financially successful where you can pay your bills and do this and do that. Yeah. You know, um, it's okay. You know, from what, from what I think, you know, what do you think? I mean, the first thing that came to my mind is all, is that age old euphemism that you hear in, in ministry all the time, especially from, from a lot of preachers who, to be, to be frank, are broke. Okay, yeah. and, and I will answer your question in a second, but from my perspective, just because you're, if you are a minister or an evangelist or somebody or missionary fi watching this, you're not supposed to be broke either. Right. Because if you're following the, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, who right now lives on streets paved with gold mm -hmm. and, lives in a and lives in a city with many mansions, you are not supposed to be broke. Okay. And there's ways for you to do that. Okay. So that's what the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is we've all ho heard that phrase. God doesn't want you, want you to own the stuff. He doesn't want the stuff to own you. Right. Now that's a two part phrase. And everyone focuses on the second part where God doesn't want the stuff to own you. And that is very clear from, from the first commandment. All right. The, 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 it's very clear. He doesn't want the stuff to own you, but he wants you to own the stuff. Right. Believe, believe it or not, he wants you to own the stuff. Now, why is that? First of all, the father of our faith, Abraham, if you go back and study him, he mm -hmm. had 300, over 300 servants that were paid. How many servants do you have? <laughs> do you have one? Most mm -hmm. people have none. They're, right. they, they're lucky to be a servant, let alone own a servant, let alone 300 servants. Even the richest people on planet Earth, unless you're the king of Saudi Arabia, you don't have 300 servants for your personal life. Right. Th that's the father of our faith. So mm -hmm. don't tell me you're supposed to be broke. You're supposed to have increase because right. guess what happens when you have increase and you're, and again, not saying that the materialism is your God, but when you have that and you're living that way and you're unashamed of it, right? that's the key. You have to be unashamed of it. Because right. if you're driving around in a brand new Escalade and you're ashamed of, because people think, oh, you're just some rich, you know what? Guess what? You can't be on fire for the Lord. You can't right. be doing what he wants you to do. So you can't be ashamed of the blessing that is supposed to fall on you. Right. And, and that's very important, too, because there's a lot of people who think I'm supposed to be poor because Jesus had nothing. Right. I'm sorry. The, 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 one of the very first acts that he did when it comes to the disciples is he got in that boat and they caught all of that fish mm -hmm. That's money. Why? Cause they gave the, they gave the boat to the purpose of Jesus. Right. Which is, which is exactly what you're supposed to do too. You're supposed to give your life to the Lord and do what he wants you to do, which in, which in that case was giving that boat to Jesus. Right. And guess what happened? They, they, they got blessed financially. Right. Okay. And Jesus even t told us that when you leave everything to follow him, which the disciples did, they left businesses. I want you to understand that the disciples were not broke. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you have a fishing business, you have a boat, you have equipment, you have employees. They left all of that. And they told Jesus, we have nothing now we're following you. And Jesus told them you will receive 100 fold in this life and heaven in the next, because you chose to leave everything else to follow me. 
And a lot of you are going to have to leave things behind. And I'm, I'm not talking about selling everything you own and giving it to Jesus or giving it to the poor. I'm not talking about that. But what I am saying is you have to give your life to him if you're going to increase the way that God wants to, to increase you. You are. Right. And that's a big decision that a lot of people are, are very difficult to make. I don't know why I'm going back to King David, but a lot of people stop studying King David after he kills Goliath. Mm -hmm. That's a problem because right. after he kills Goliath, he ends up his life, like I said, with a six to seven billion dollar net worth. Mm -hmm. How did he get that? What decisions did he make? The first decision he had to make after killing Goliath was leaving his father's home and all of his siblings as the, young, as the youngest sibling at 16, 17 years old, whatever he was, and going to the king. Mm -hmm. Now, how difficult is that going to be when all of your siblings are saying, yeah, you're you're just some nobody, and now you want to go live with the king. You shouldn't be doing that because we got to be doing this. You got to be following us. How many of us in our lives have that same problem? Right. That we're choosing to do something that's comfortable instead of choosing to take the security of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a thing I also like to talk about a lot because the security that the world offers is very different than the security that God offers. Right. And, and you have to be able to, to have that spiritual security. If you're going to increase financially there, there is. And again, you, you talk a lot about paths and things that you have, that you can take today to right. be able to do that. And the first thing is knowing and understanding that you need are not just required, but, sig but significantly encouraged to be able to increase. And yeah. I talk about methods that you that have to be able to do that. Okay. And, and so that's one of the things that I like to talk about to a lot of people. Yeah. I, I think it's important. I think it's important that people realize that you, you know, when, because many of my friends who, who have a strong belief in God, that's when they started to really hit levels of success and they started to elevate is when their their beliefs in God became very strong and they focused on what God was telling them to do and not what the world was telling them to do. Agreed. hundred hundred percent. And where, wherever you are right now, because most people who are watching this probably have a job of some sort as their main source of income. Okay. The first thing you have to understand is the method what, that the Lord wants you to, to, to be able to generate income. Because I will tell you this, uh, one of the favorite chap books in the, the Bible is Psalm 23. Yeah. Of course, the, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Uh, he makes me lie down in green pastures, valley of shadow of death and all that stuff. And part of that is my, he anointeth my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Okay. Mm -hmm. An overflowing cup means you have an abundance. Yeah. And, and yes, part of that is financial. Yes, it is part of that. If I just want to remind you that, that in the Bible, it talks about money at least five to six times more than sin, five to six times more than heaven and salvation and all yes. of that. So if it wasn't important to God, he would not have put it in there. It is right. very, 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 very important. So if you are at a job right now and you're in, you, like you said, what, what can people do today? Because it's great to have information, but the reality is it, you, you did not start a podcast to just bring people information, and just live the same life that they are 12 months from now. So right. you can take, so again, the first step again, getting on fire for the Lord and loving him with all your heart. And that means if you love somebody, you're going to have to get to know them. And that means prayer and Bible study beyond, but beyond that, again, prayer and Bible study does not lead to increase. It leads right. to a motivation to increase, but mm -hmm. it does not. So the first thing you have to understand is number one, how am I supposed to make money biblically? And right. so I'm just going to briefly go over this really yes. quick. There's four, there's four different types of earners in the Bible. The first is a slave. And if you're watching this, you're probably not a slave. The second is a servant, which is, which is for all intent and purposes, an employee. They mm -hmm. sell themselves to their boss in exchange for a paycheck. That is not how the Lord wants you to live. And most people, and everyone who is rich in the Bible did not get that way as a servant. The third is a laborer. And that's where you are basically a self-contractor of one. Okay. So for example, Stacy, you as the owner of your podcast, you are a laborer in that sense. So it's just you and you alone. And if you have staff on there, that, that kind of elevates you to the next level. But for most people who are just starting out at a, on a podcast, doing a podcast, or you're a streamer of some sort, you're a laborer, which means the Lord can bless you in that area. He can. Right. There's no earthly person stopping you to say, hey, you know what? You can't earn more than this. Right. Do you understand the difference? Because if you, if, if the Lord wants to bless you financially at a job, 
He has to bless your boss. Right. He has to bless the company you work at. Both of those things. And if your boss is a heathen or your company is run by heathens, that right. means God has to bless a heathen person in order to bless you financially. And for a lot of you, that, that realization right there is going to unlock a lot of things. Because now what you do is when you say, the Lord, I love the Lord. I want to earn money his way. I want to do my assignment, but I can't do it at the job I'm at. Lord, give me something else to do because I'm not supposed to be here. That's that's the key right there. The Once you make that mental shift and, and in your spirit, that's what's going to change. And something is going to come up to you yes. that's going to help you move from that servant into the laborer category and eventually into the master category, which right. if, if you have an employee, if you're an employer and you have people working for you or you have money that you're putting to work for you, that's the master. So those right. are the four, the four ways that we earn money biblically. But I'm telling you, a lot of people are stuck financially because they don't realize that they're not supposed to be in, not, not just in the job they're at, but in a job, period. Right. Okay. And so once we realize that, and again, I'm not saying go quit your job and just go to the first opportunity that comes. I'm not saying that, but eventually you're supposed to be able to move to that area. Why? So the Lord can pour his oil into your cup without right. a boss saying, okay, no, you can't have any more. Right. Okay. Because I cannot stress this enough. If the Lord wants you to earn a certain money a certain way, he can't bless you if you're doing it the other way. Right. And I feel a lot of times when you give your life to the Lord and you give your, yourself to the Lord, things just happen. And it's not, it's, it's very unplanned. It just happens. You know, one day you might be in, in, in one predicament and then the next day, all of a sudden a miracle happens and things start mm -hmm. to roll and things start to change yeah. in your life. And why is that? Because you prayed, because you, you spoke to the heavens above, mm -hmm. because you, you asked and, and you received, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. it's like, it's, it, you know, these are things that people have to really open themselves up to, you know, because to. a lot of people, you know, they, they sometimes lose faith and they get off the path or they, they don't, they don't ask, you know, they, they pray for others, but they don't ask for themselves, you know, and, it, and it's not selfish to ask for yourself. You know, it's called self-love. It's mm -hmm. things you need in your life, you know, and it's okay to ask for those things. I think, what is it, your feeling? It's 100% okay to ask for those things. Because again, when you, when you get blessed, this is so, so key that I want your audience to know when you are blessed financially, you are a great representation of the Lord, especially when you say, and give all the credit to him. When you give all the credit to him for the blessing that you have, other people are going to say, I want to, I want what you have. Yeah. Okay. How many people, again, I know the, this is actually scriptural that the rich have many friends and mm -hmm. there's a reason for that because people want to have more increase and more finances. That's just the way the world has worked and it's going to work. Right. And guess what happens when you're that rich person? Mm -hmm. People want to be around you. Yeah. And guess what happens? They're going to follow the Lord the same way you do. Right. And you don't, and you're not even an evangelist. You're a business owner, and yet you're doing more to advance the kingdom and bring people into the kingdom than people who are in full time ministry. Right. That's what your future is, and that's loving to the Lord. Right. It is. <laughs> I, oh, I, don't, sure. I, I just don't understand. I'm not going to say I don't understand this, but there's I don't understand why people again are afraid to increase financially because they're afraid of what's coming, uh, or just afraid of having that more than enough. I think a lot of times people are fearful from my own perspective, people are fearful of change. People are, or they, or they have their own perception of what the Lord, they think the Lord wants. And I think that's what the, one of the main things is, is that so there's so many perceptions in so many ways and, and, you know, and, and it's all how you were raised too in your own environment, in your own family. And then a lot of people will take the beliefs that they, they endured growing up and, mm -hmm. you know, it might not be right. It might, you know, but they have to, at some point you have to stand back and say, what works for me? Not what mom told me, not what grandma or grandpa told me, but what works for me as a person? What is going to help me excel? What is going to help me move forward? What do I need to do for me to get to the point that I can look into the future and see abundance? Yes. And agreed. that's what I think is the problem is that we're always, so not, not everyone, but a large portion of people are always looking at what, you know, they don't want to disappoint. What did mom want me to do? What did dad want me to do? What did grandma want me to do? It's not that it's what you need to do for yourself. I don't know. What's your opinion? 
Yeah, I, I can't agree with that more. Uh, that what you just said is taking me in about 15 different directions. <laughs> the first thing, again, coming back, coming back to, to King David, 16 or 17 years old, and his entire family is sheep shearers. And they say, you're supposed to be a sheep shearer because that's what we are. And that's what you're supposed to do. Right. And now all of a sudden you've got to leave all of that. That's very difficult to do right. as a 16 or 17 year old boy. Right. A lot of leaving your household. It is. Uh, you want to honor your parents. And I, I will tell you this, honoring your father and mother is important. It's the, it's one of the top commandments. It's the, it's the top commandment that comes be, with you and your behavior, not including what the Lord wants you to do. So it's beyond, it's more important than murder, stealing and adultery. It's more important than all that. So I'm yeah. not discounting that, but there's a difference between honoring your parents and being a slave to your parents. Right now, when you're 12 years old, you have to do what your parents are, are telling you to do because it's kind of in your, you're in their household, so to speak. Yes. Now, I'm not saying if your parents tell you to roll a joint, you do it. But, <laughs> but if they're saying clean your room or get good grades, okay, we, we kind of have to do that. All right. But at some point you have to understand and your parent, and this is important, your parents have to understand. And this is where most parents miss it is that you, your, your job is not to tell them exactly what their path is supposed to be. Yes. Your job is to help emphasize their giftings, uh, let them grow in those giftings, and yes. then utilize those giftings and help them find their assignment, and then right. get them on that assignment as they start moving and flying their own special way. Right. So that is so that as a parent is what you are supposed to do. Now the other thing that that I don't I don't know why I'm going about this is that because our society has changed so significantly over 40 years. And one of my, one of the books in my series is literally exactly about this topic. And if you're 30 or 40 years old, or even 20 years old right now, this is going to hit home to you. I promise mm -hmm. you this because the society that your parents and your grandparents lived in is not the society we live in today. Right. And I talked about those four ways of earning. Mm -hmm. If you are a, if you are a millennial or younger, you have to be a laborer. You yeah. have to, if you're an employee, you're going to die broke and you're going to be extremely broke for the rest of your life. And you're going to be living out of your car because inflation is going to destroy you. Mm -hmm. And we can talk and complain about it all, all a lot. And I see a lot of people do it. And yeah. I believe me, I'm aware of that. But if that's all I'm focused on mentally, and I, and I can't stress this enough, if that's all you're, if you're only focused on the problem, right. you're going to have all of the problems in your life. Yes. If you're focused on the future and the increase, then that's what you're going to have because you're thinking about it. And that's what's going to arrive. Right. So, so when it comes to the parents and the grandparents, when you, in the 1950s, one in the, one man could support a wife and two kids and a middle-class income on a job, right? That is impossible today. Now yeah. we can complain from here to kingdom come. And I go into very great detail in one of my books about this, about why people, especially my age and younger have to become laborers and masters in the marketplace. You right. have no choice. Because otherwise you are going to be so poor that you can't even afford to, to, to get married. Right. That's where you're going to be. So I, I talk about this a lot is that you have to be able to understand how you're supposed to earn money biblically. And that's yes. being a laborer, being a master and, and all that stuff. And it's, it's so very true. And uh, I think, you know, so when, when you think about all this stuff that we've talked about, what are the what are the some some of the, the the takeaways that you want really emphasize on people that you really want people to understand so they can get started and they can get on the right path and they can be financially successful but be financially successful and not be obsessed with materialism but use it in, in a productive way to help themselves to help others and to yeah. grow in in God's word. Now, what are the, some of the takeaways that you all these things that you talked about that you really want to emphasize right now? Yeah. Again, the, the first thing, again, you, you you can't get what the Lord wants for you unless you love him first. I can't stress this enough, but putting that aside, the, the, the first thing for me that had to happen was understanding once I understood those four ways of, of earning money, mm -hmm. then, then I said, okay, if I can't do this, Lord, I need an opportunity. And to be honest with you, I felt that exact way as soon as I left grad school, because bringing it all full circle my parents really wanted me to do something with my life that I just at some point said, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. For me, that was an engineering PhD. My mm -hmm. parents really wanted me 
from the time I was born because of the analytical skills that I had to get a PhD. And I felt I have to be able to honor them. I don't want to disappoint my parents. So I'm going to do this. At some point, the, 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 the part of that life just completely outweighed my desire to help them. So I had to make a switch. And once I made that switch, even though I didn't want the PhD life, I also didn't want the life that I had chosen, not because right. it was bad, but because I knew it wasn't the future that I wanted. And what really tipped me off was I was working at a firm right out of grad school. Okay. I was there maybe three weeks. And one of my coworkers said, I can't wait till I work here 20 years before I get my promotion. <laughs> and I just about dropped dead in my spirit. And I wasn't even a believer at that time. Right. I, I said to myself, if I have to do that, I, I'm just going to heaven right now or wherever <laughs> I'm supposed to go. Okay. But I'm telling you, once that happened, that was the moment, I kid you not, within 48 hours, I received a pamphlet in the mail of an opportunity that, that brought me from a, a servant into a laborer. And mm -hmm. I didn't even realize it. Oh, really? And, that, and that's what's going to happen. And I, again, as much as you want me to say, these are the specific steps for you to take because again, the opportunity that the Lord has for you is for your benefit, right? It's not just for him. It's for you too. And again, the most important thing is that when we're pleasing to God, just like when we are pleasing to our parents, yeah. no matter if they were poor, middle-class or rich, that's when we really got blessed by them when yeah. we were pleasing to them right. and when we're pleasing to God and doing the route that he wants us to do it in the way he wants us to do it in. Right. That's when the blessing starts to flow. And yeah. that's what I really want to emphasize to people is that once you do that, those are the action steps for you to take. And, and I, I, I'm glad you brought this up because my next broadcast is, is going to be titled being a trailblazer I like because that. every single one of us have a very unique path. And in order to get there, I, I'm going to start exactly where you just described where, where every single person there is a job. They mm -hmm. have a job and that's all they have. But right. how do we get from the next step to the next step to the next step? And the first thing to do, like I said, if that's you and you have a job is understanding that you are not supposed to make money in that fashion to be up, to really do what the Lord wants you to do. Right. So I told you, get on, get, start loving the Lord with all your heart. And you know, that means praying and reading. That also means understanding Lord, if this is how you want me to earn money, then I need an opportunity to do so. Maybe you've already been there. And right. somebody presented an opportunity three years ago that you just scoffed at and said, I don't want to do that. That's right. sales. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to anybody. Well, <laughs> too bad. Guess what? Every single person who makes a lot of money talks to a lot of people. Right. Why? Because people have money. That's where it comes <laughs> from. It doesn't come from the sky. Yeah. It comes from somebody else. Exactly. So whatever opportunity that you have or want to have, and you know this better than anyone, you mm -hmm. have to be able to, to have that opportunity where you can earn more than what your boss tells you to earn more, but right. also grow in your skill set, And that's the next step in, yes. in being a trailblazer is that once you get that opportunity and you, and you saying, I'm not quitting until this succeeds because the Lord told me to do it. Yes. Then you have to start getting mentorship. Yes. Then you have to start getting skills. Yes. Then you have to start building right. on top of that opportunity, building yourself. And, 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 and the Lord's going to give you avenues to be able to do that. Right. Yes. Yes. He could give you, and he's wiser than any, than all of us combined. But the reality is there are skill sets and business skill sets that you will have to learn. Yes. That's your next step beyond that. Yes. Then when you start increasing even more and you're successful at that laborer, now you're going to start putting your money to work Yes. And, and even growing even, even faster. And not only that, then you can have being a master where your money works for you and mm -hmm. also a laborer where you are now being asked. On, on, on top of all that you have right. to be able to talk and converse with people about what you did. Right. Think about, think about speaking fees. You think your speaking fee is high? King Solomon got paid a hundred million, almost a hundred million dollars by the queen of Sheba just for a day of his time. You think your speaking fees look high? Listen, you got, you have no idea where you're headed. You have no <laughs> idea where you're headed. I, I, I'm throwing dollar amounts out, out to you and you think those are just so outrageous. I can't even think about it. I can barely afford $500 groceries. Well, guess right. what? When you start focusing on where you're supposed to be going and yes. what's guaranteed for you, right. you're going to start stop focusing on the grocery bill and you're going to start focusing on this great life that is guaranteed to have. 
the half. Right. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Okay. So, so, so again, those are next. And, and again, I, I, for, for me, that that's what I like to talk about a lot because those, because again, those are things that most people are going to miss when they're reading the word. Yes. And, I, and, and, and there are so many great stories, especially financially that you can talk about today. I think I've done 40 or 50, maybe 60 broadcasts at, at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I think four of them have been on giving. Yeah. Okay. The rest have been about how you can improve your life today with the, with the word and the skills that it tells you to do in the word to be able to increase, to increase, to increase. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'm with you all the way. I think, you know, there's too, so many people that live modestly because they think that's the way God wants them to live, mm -hmm. but there is no reason why you can't focus on the future and you can't live a prosperous life Great. and you should live a prosperous life mm -hmm. and God wants you to live a prosperous life. Yes, he, does. he wants you to, and he, you know, he, he wants you, it's life. If you really look at the Bible, it's all about love, kindness, gratitude, mm -hmm. giving, mm -hmm you know, and, and receiving, you know, and, 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 and that's what, if you really like break it down to a couple of words, that's what it's really all about, yes. you know, but there is nothing that says, no, you can't be wealthy. No, you can't, you can't uh, be successful, you know? So people have to really, you know, open their minds and get out of that gray box and, and get out of what people have told them and really think about what they need and what their wants are and listen to what God tells you, because God is always talking to us. We just have to take the time to listen. He is. And, and the, the biggest focus for me is exactly what you said, focusing on helping other people increase because there's a, it, because one of my favorite scriptures is Ephesians 6, 8, where it says, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Yeah. So if I help other people increase, what's God going to do for me? Right. It's going to be mountains and mountains and mountains. Yes. Okay. Of, of, of increase and more than I can even handle. And so that's my main focus. I, I understand what's coming. But my main focus is loving him, doing what he wants me to do, and helping other people where they're at today. Okay, yes. and the, the the reason why it's why why it's more blessed to give than to receive is that if I one of the things I really want people to understand about God is that he's he's a great mighty God, and there's a blessing for following, and there's a there's a tangible blessing for obeying what he wants you to do. So we have been called to be generous and being givers. And again, not going to go down that tangent right now, but the reason why it says it's more blessed to give to receive in part is because when you, if you were to give a hundred dollars to somebody, whoever it is, for whatever reason, the right. recipient gets a hundred dollars, but what's coming back to you mm -hmm. more than a hundred dollars, assuming you gave in the right mindset. If you, if you said, okay, fine, I'll give you a hundred bucks. God, just give me my money. <laughs> you're not getting anything, but if you, get, if you get it right, cause you, cause you're basically just being hundred percent selfish. Yeah. You're not loving God and right. that, th there's no blessing there, but right. if you give in the right reasons, and I'm telling you when you, do, when the Lord calls you to give, <laughs> it's going to hurt sometimes. Yeah. It's hurt for me a lot of times. Cause I've given money more than I would like to say to people that I just at, at, on surface level didn't want to do it. But when you do it in the front of the Lord, there is a tangible blessing that is returned. And that's one of the reasons why, God is just so great and good yes. for all of us is that there's a blessing for following him, but it's also because it's going to help him. It's also designed to help you because I, I, as much as God know that the average person, and I talk about this a lot too, is selfish. Yeah. And again, not put, not saying, not denigrating people, not putting them down, but I'm saying the average person is selfish. So right. when my biggest thing is focusing a lot on the blessings of the Lord, so, because I understand that people are going to say, well, how does this help me? Right. Well, I'm telling you exactly how it helps you because when you do what you're supposed to be doing, this is the, I'm not going to say return because that makes it sound like a lottery, but yeah. this is what's coming to you when, when you do this on, on top of everything else. Right. Exactly. So, so, so true. So true. This has been amazing, Ron. I can't wait till you come back on the show. I'm looking forward to it. This has been totally amazing. Now for people who want to contact you, because I know right now they are working on your website right now. Yeah. So if people want to contact you, do you have a social network somewhere they can contact you? Yes. Yeah. So the best way to contact me is info at 
heavenlytreasury.com, H-E-A-V-E-N-L-Y-T-R-E-A-S-U-R-Y.com, info at heavenlytreasury.com. That will get, that will get an email to me. The, the next is I do a week, uh, right now I'm doing a weekly broadcast. Right now it's twice a week, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p, uh, excuse me, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, at, and that's at Twitch dot tv slash heavenly treasury that's the only broadcasting platform i'm on now soon to be a lot more because as as you know if you're if you're producing your own content you have to know how to get it out there especially to right. multiple places um i know elon musk just bought over twitter and x made some changes to be able to do that getting that going right now um i i i, I have my book series that is ready it's it's about to be sent to publishing i'm right now i'm interviewing publishers because it's one thing if you're going to publish one book but if you're going to have a series that you know is going to come out, that takes a lot of time. Okay. Mm-hmm. So those, the, the best way for, to contact me is again, info at heavenly treasury.com. That'll give me an email, uh, twitch.tv slash heavenly treasury, uh, twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, one, one P right now it's 1 PM Eastern, 10 AM Pacific. And then I also have uh, a Twitter handle as well. Okay. Uh, it's the, the link to that is in the, the twitch.tv. You'll see my social media is down there as well. And so. do you have an idea when they're going to be launching your first series of the book? Um, for, from a timing perspective, once I get it into a publisher, it's going to be it's going to be copy edited and formatted. I would say uh, uh, once it gets in there, a couple of months, uh, three months, something something along those lines. But I'll be very very excited to get to get that going. Well, okay. we'll be watching for it because definitely definitely we'll be promoting it for you. Absolutely, looking look, definitely looking forward to it because it's been it's. It's been a long project. I will tell you that a, a, a worthy project. Yes. But it has take, taken a lot of time because when you've been called to literally study the entire word uh, to, to come up with this series, I started back even b- earlier than I would like to admit publicly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I literally went through the entire Bible cover to cover and what looked at every single scripture that had to do with money, or at least that I thought had to do with money. And that's a lot of them. I came up to I don't even know, 70 or 80 pages worth of scriptures, mm-hmm. organizing them all in a certain format and then making a book about each topic. So even when it comes to giving, there's multiple ways, there's multiple reasons and, and opportunities to give. There's multiple reasons about work. Uh, I mean, literally 25 different books. Uh, the, the manuscripts are already written. Yeah. It's just getting, now it's just starting getting them out and publishing. Right. So well, this has been awesome. A, it's been a long, but very, very worthy, worthy project. That's for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you're, you know, I, I think it took me for my the complete herbal guide. It took me about six years uh, of research just to get the book ready. So yeah, when you're writing a book, it could be very uh, involving for sure. It, it's a, it's very worthy. I know there's a lot of people who say, I want to write a book. I want to write a book. Listen, start a, open word right now and get your book going. Yeah. Get your book going. It just puts, start putting words on paper. The topic will come and then you'll, you'll know, okay, what's, what do I need to really hone in on? And I'm sure you, you've done this because I know you've written a lot of books as well, is that you start getting stuff on paper and now you're set, now as things are going, you think, okay, who am I going to market this to? What's my target audience? What do I want to focus this on? Right. And, and I know you and I've had conversations about, oh, I want this to be in this book. Uh, I'll just hold off and put it in the next one. Stuff right. like that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This has been great, Ron. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I've enjoyed this time and thank you so much for your words of wisdom. You've well, been very inspiring, very motivational, and you've taught our audience a lot. And thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Blessed to be here. Uh, have a great day. You as well.